Welcome to Clutch Studio. I'm Mads. With me tonight, I have Smoko, the top bloco. How are you going, Smoko? Indeed. I am going very well. Very tonight, well. Tonight, we've got uh, Pulling Forehead versus Salt <laughs> Can't Melt Steel Beams. These are some These... great team names, by the way. I think they're fantastic. If there was, if there was, if this uh, ladder was uh, based on team names alone, I think I think it would be a battle between these these two teams. Um, so we're in fact casting the Cyber Gamer uh, Dota Two Open Ladder uh, at the moment. So these two teams uh, will be facing off tonight. Uh, Pauling Forehead currently sitting in number eight on the rankings, and Salt Can't Melt Steel Beams uh, sitting on number fourteen. So yeah. pretty big match tonight. Yeah, these are, you know, getting some of those better teams in terms of um, skill and stuff on the ladder. And um, yeah, no, these are always good games when you have like the top 20 teams playing. It's normally very good. And we've been seeing a lot of that, especially with, you know, Legion Gaming, uh, Passive Aggressive Warriors, uh, and all these other teams. I honestly can't remember now, but yeah. Tyrant, another big one. Team yes. Spire. There's some big names Esports. coming out. Yeah. Uh, so pulling for here, they're actually on a five win streak right now. So they are oh. definitely pulling somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it's going to be, they're, they're coming off with a lot of momentum. Um, so it's going to be quite tough for Salt to slow that down. Um, so they're currently working their way into the top five. I think they will actually get in there if they win this game. They're currently sitting at 1490 ELO rating and they will gain ah. 26 if they win tonight. Putting them in, while well, I do some quick math, <laughs> uh, yeah, putting them in just behind Heroes of Lumbi. So yeah, they're in that top five, top six position. Um, so yeah, definitely up there with the best of them. Yeah, um, well, in terms of uh, the maths in the, the ELO thing, I have no idea how it works, but uh, if you win, you get points, I'm guessing. Um, that's that's essentially it. If you win, you yeah. get points. If you lose, you say goodbye to those points. Um, right. It's also based on uh, how often you play as well and yeah. which teams are, you're actually playing against. So obviously you play against the higher ELO ranked teams, you're going to get more points if you do in fact win. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm not sure the exact math behind it, but that's the general idea. Um, right. So for tonight's game, uh, two pretty strong teams. Anything you're looking forward yep. to seeing? Um, I'm looking forward to seeing uh, both of these teams because I've never seen them play before. Um, I'm, I'm looking forward to just seeing them in general um, because I've only been casting uh, I've not been able to cast every single game so far, and normally I've been seeing a lot of Legion gaming, um, you know, Team Paradise, Paragon, these sorts of teams. I have not seen these guys, and this, you know, these uh, these names for the teams are definitely uh, very enticing in terms of uh, getting me to watch and getting me to cast. Yeah, exactly but just right. Just in general, yeah, I'd love to see these teams play and, and see what they uh, like to go for and what heroes they like to pick. Um, yeah, so... I can't really uh, predict just yet. For uh, uh, yeah. pulling for head, I've I haven't actually seen them play either because um, they've been slightly off our radar, um, just shooting forward into the into this top ten. So um, now the, they're definitely going to be showing up um, again and again. I would say being in this this top position, um, I definitely yeah. want to see how a, a team on a current five win streak plays. So they they must be doing something right. Yeah, um, I'm not too sure in terms of both teams in their skill levels and the you know the MMRs or whatever um but you know if they've got five wins in a row they must be doing something right well i That's mean we sure. can we can see what i i believe is one of the 
uh, team players uh, from Salt in their logo there on the screen. Oh, uh, 4K uh, MMR. <laughs> well, 4K is, you know, it's not terrible, that's for sure. Uh, terrible. I don't know if you're watching the stream, but if you can see their logo, it's a very attractive man um, as their, their team logo there. So obviously yeah. a great player um, who they decided to idolize. Yes, that's either someone from their team or that is a random picture from Google Images. I'm not too sure where they got <laughs> I, that I from. Think but, uh... I think it was mentioned in the chat right. that that was a player. So, Oh, was it? Right, yeah. okay. So possibly uh, not their official logo, but yeah, beautiful face nonetheless. Yes, very beautiful indeed. If you're listening on the stream, yes, that is a very, very beautiful <laughs> face. <laughs> hopefully hopefully it's uh... like their mid player and they um, they form all their strats around him. Yeah, no, that's what I'm hoping as well. Hoping he's the captain. Um, yeah. <laughs> and it was so his decision to put that there. <laughs> We've actually got uh, the entire two teams sitting in the lobby right now. So we're just, just going to wait for this to start up. Um, shouldn't be too long now. Uh, any any bets on first picks or first bands? Uh, look, I, I hate using the same answer I do every other time. But uh, maybe I'll change it up. Um, Hmm. I'm not really sure, to be honest. Well, I mean, you're your analyst today, uh, Mads. What are you? <laughs> uh, all right. I'll use my um my great analyzing skill. Use your analyzing skills. Say first ban. Uh, let's go Earth Spirit because you know that's a safe choice. Yep. Um, first pick. That's that's definitely more more dicey territory because there's a lot more options right now um there is we, we've seen actually lion getting picked up a lot um in the first phase these days um so teams mm. are really prioritizing that i wouldn't be surprised if we saw an invoker as well so um either, either one of those two i think yeah i'm gonna say that in my guess for the first pick it's e i'm i don't know why i'm guessing this well i do know why i'm guessing this it's either going to be a lion or a vengeful spirit in the first picking stage that's what i'm saying now just because i'm sick of saying od lone druid <laughs> uh <laughs> so i'm yeah i'm gonna say that Invoke, this, this meta, yeah. you know this meta's getting old it's getting old it's it's almost getting to that that point isn't it um yeah so we're I, actually loading into the game now so um we'll just have a quick break here before the draft and we'll see you over there. See you then.
All right, and welcome back. So, pulling forehead on the side of the dyer versus salt can't melt steel beams on the radiant side. Uh, so, this is the Cyber Gamer Dota 2 Open Ladder, uh, brought to you by Clutch Studios. I'm Mads. With me tonight, Smoko, and we're underway. First bam was OD. Ah, yep. No surprises. And who are they going to ban here? I mean, they have got every single option in the world right now. This meta I mean, needs to change, am I right? Um, <laughs> I said if, we are... Yeah, and there did. it is. There you go. Radiant team ban. Unlucky, he was, he was second ban, but I'll, I'll take it. I'll take it. I'm thinking Lone Druid Wisp uh, bans here. Lone um, Druid, nature's prophet. Oh, yeah, you got to ban that. Ten Someone's going to ban them. Remaining. They're thinking about it though, they don't want to They don't want to jump the gun here. Well they get first pick, so um, if they want to pick any of these sort of top Reserve heroes, time. they'll be wanting to leave them in. Um, so, especially if they're uh, like, if they want like one or two of them, it, it's even better because they can leave them in the pool and it, it puts them in a nice position that um, pulling forehead can only um, Ban one of them. They've actually been the Phantom Lancer here. Hey, hell. Um, Interesting choice. Not too sure why they did that. Uh, perhaps a hero they're going to pick is not very good against PL. Someone yeah, I mean, a that single target, the, possibly. That would be the only reason why you do that, unless you're just scared of it in general. Maybe if, or maybe they know that pulling ahead actually um, play this hero. Possibly, yeah, and... They've done some stalking. Well, a PL's good against a lot, a lot of heroes, just pretty much any hero that hasn't got some sort of AoE and, and is a lot of single target. Um, so, yeah, just banning that out, I guess, is a matter of preference at this point, maybe? They might be going for uh, single target, um, like yes. carries as well, who really can't deal with the PL, so um, that could be another reason. So. Maybe they're not thinking of picking up like a Sven or a Gyra or something like no. that, so... Radiant team Lone Druid, pick. there he is. And I called a Lion or Vengeful Spirit here. That's my yeah, guess. I think mine was either Lion or Invoker for first pick. You're right. I don't know why, I, I mean, Vengeful Spirit hasn't actually been as popular as I thought. Um, but still Jeez. very strong. She's falling off a little bit um, since Lion has, has come more into the fray. Yeah. Uh, so we, I would imagine we'll see more of him um, as time goes on. And she's not valued as much because he fits the same sort of role. So if you get him, um, you don't take her. But of course there's two teams, so um, yeah. there's a good chance she'll still get picked up. And there's also a good chance that we will see a Faceless Void. Um, because we've been seeing yes. lots of Faceless Void. Yep. And the Witch Doctor combos, um, we even saw a Triant Protector at one point, who went jungle. Uh, I don't think <laughs> we'll see that again. Uh, but wow. Troll to the Disruptor, Disruptor is here. That's definitely an interesting first pick. He, he is um, in this meta uh, right now. I was actually watching Dota Pit today, and I think... Oh, yeah. uh, oh he's in it, yeah. Yeah, he was Disruptor's getting certainly good. Um, his, his catching ability is just fantastic, and obviously the silence um, just makes a bad day for heroes like Invoker, who um, are quite common nowadays, who just yeah, rely on their spells alone. I think one of the only carries that can deal with a Disruptor, the two that I can think of, are Storm Spirit and PL. PL can deal with Disruptor in the Glimpse because he can disjoint the Glimpse completely with his, uh, his Doppelgang, his Doppelwalk. All he does is he uses it just before he gets sent back and he doesn't actually get glimpsed. Which may explain the ban, but it's a oh, very yeah. situational ban. Very situational ban. And we won't be seeing any Storm Spirit because he can do the same thing. There's our friend Carl, so they're actually picking him into the Disruptor. Yes. They're not too worried about it. Carl the Invoker has made his appearance. You can see his white eyes there. So, especially he a hero busy. who focuses so much on his um, ability to run away um, to escape, the kinetic field, if you get that around him, um, it really gives him a tough time. So, um, we'll have to see how that plays out during the game. Well, you were right though about the Invoker pick as a number one. I, I really didn't think he'd be a, a first pick, but 
he is sometimes a first pick. Some teams just really like it. Yeah, he's he's still floating around at the moment. Teams just love his uh, versatility. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if they go with something like a faceless void and then um, build him in the, the exhort sort of route so you can drop the, the meteor in there, the chronosphere. It's, it's good fun. Yeah. No, that is a very good point. Sun strikes, huge amounts of damage and lots of control from the void, obviously. Um, but Salt can't melt steel beams, might even consider picking them up themselves. Uh, you can glimpse someone back for a nice chrono or a nice uh, kinetic field, and there's no way they're from this run. They're getting beaten down by the void, and there's the lion. There he is. He's also a great combo with lion as well, um, especially if he, he goes that exalt uh, build, because if you get uh, the... Uh, Sunstrike, pretty much line anywhere on the map, Earth Spike into Sunstrike, into Finger. That's a, pretty much a solo pick off for a line just roaming around by himself. So um, I imagine we'll see that sort of combo. Yeah, something like that would uh, definitely work. And they have got another pick here. Um, whether they pick their mid or another support, the Silencer. This is interesting. This is an interesting pick indeed. <laughs> he is good against he is good against Invoker though and Lion for sure. They, they don't they don't like this magic. Um, I hope I really hope they pick an anti mage as well. This is really mm. uh, really round off their draft. And a yeah, Pugna so. or something, you know, just punishing <laughs> everything the Invoker does. Oh but man, that silencer, would be really fun. I think we saw a Silencer um, recently in the safe lane. I'm pretty sure. I think yes, that may have been did. the game. That may have been a recent game. Was that? That was, was that when you were you were with Jared or you were with Cacti King at that point? I'm pretty sure. Uh, no, that was that was last week what sometime. Um, sometime so then. Was, they did silence the save and then they had a faceless void off yes. lane with with a lich and the faceless void just got so much fun. The silencer actually didn't do very well. Um, he he had a really tough time in the landing stage. Um, so I wonder if we Ten could be seeing a, a carry silencer. Again, possibly. I Five prefer the support of Silencer myself, but because I think he, um, in terms of his farming ability, he's not too good. Reserve time. Um, the only thing is with the, yeah. these two support picks, they don't have a lot of lockdown. You're not really yet. sort of putting all your eggs into the um, kinetic field, um, sort of send back remaining. with the glimpse. But again, mm. that can only catch Ten one back. person reliably. Yeah. Um, yeah, well, they don't have the tusk to pick now. They banned it themselves, so there's no real... Uh, they don't really need it, the tusk, I guess, when they have a glimpse. Um, but they do have the Night Stalker banned out, which would have been a very solid off lane here for uh, Salt, Can't Melt, Steel Beams. Pretty self-sufficient in the lane. Um, this could even be some sort of aggressive lane with a Disruptor and Silencer um, with, another, with another carry present, possibly an aggressive off lane. These two work pretty well in a, in a tri lane, these two heroes, the Disruptor and Silencer. It's a lot of damage, a lot of early damage, for sure. I'm surprised we haven't seen the Faceless Void banned out yet, because I imagine pulling ahead uh, wants to pick that up. It would go really well with the current um, lineup. Well, someone wants to pick it, because no one's banned it. That's yeah. normally <laughs> how it works. Um, we've we've seen Chaos it so often Nine. now. I think I like the Chaos Knight band because, yeah, the Chaos Knight can re reality rift outside of the Kinetic Field, which is situational, but, um... And he I think doesn't it's... really care about Static Storm either. Like, no, well, He just had people in it. <laughs> yeah, just he's just so tanky, he can survive the whole thing. Yeah, he's susceptible to that kind of damage, but he does have a way of getting out of it. Um, it's kind of like... Yeah, no, I think it's a fairly solid ban anyway. Um, we don't really see him too much. Whether he would have been a hero remaining. that pulling four head would have Clinks. thought about picking, I don't know. They do pick a Clinks though, I like Radiant that. Team pick. I like the Clinks pick. I think the Clinks pick um, is good because he is going to have a very. I, I reckon he's going to do really well in lane. There's not really that. It, depending on how Salt can't melt, Steel Beams run their lanes, he is going to have a, uh, a good time. There's not a lot they can do to really catch him out in a way again though um 
he is one of those heroes that relies on his abilities to escape. Um, so you're picking him into a silencer and disruptor. It is quite risky um, because a disruptor can come some back, and mm. he's so squishy that if you trap him in the kinetic field and you've got dust, um, it's pretty much a free kill every time. Yeah, it depends how his laning goes. If he gets a very fast level six, and he maybe goes for a. A quick Orchid or a BKB? Yeah, I'd expect um, the Orchid here because, yeah. like, against these two heroes, Silence a Disruptor, he can just blow them up so quickly. Um, so I'd imagine he is going for that sort of ganking oriented build. No, I would imagine. Need a BKB as well. Yeah. Yeah, this that's is a interesting. Pick. This could be a carry Silencer. This could be a very, very aggressive um, dual core uh, lineup from Salt Cart Mount Steel Beams with. Three oh, interesting heroes, honestly. Uh, I'm not too sure what's happening here. I, uh, I think these are their two supports with their silencer safe lane, yeah. I imagine. Potentially. Um, there's the lockdown we were saying was possibly missing from their lineup, so um, that's, that's definitely going to help them out here. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of Ogre Magi, unfortunately, in terms of lockdown. He has a single target stun. Five and it doesn't last very long. Was it two seconds? 1.5 seconds done. Yeah, it's not just the not longest. Enough. I think it, I think they should have gone for like the Tide Hunter or something if they wanted some good, this, you know, some AOE, uh, some sort of control, you know, someone with a good disable. There's no slider for them, but um, and he doesn't provide a whole lot in no. burst damage either. Um, no, I mean, unless, unless got... you you yeah. <laughs> you put all your eggs in the uh, RNG basket with his uh, ultimate there, and yeah. just hope for some big multicast. Yeah, he needs an Ag Scepter if he wants to really be good in damage, and Five you know, like a Bloodstone Ag Scepter, um, all kinds of things. Um, <laughs> but Eggs Ogre is so He's fun. It's one of the funner eggs in the game. Just being able to Five being seconds, able to throw out stuns all day. Yeah, I don't really, uh, not too sure about that, but Dyer there's the Slark. Um, he is, he definitely has made a comeback this meta for sure. Haven't actually seen him that much in terms of Cyber Gamer, but in the Majors he was, uh, he was making some good plays. And I don't know, I mean, there is a lot that he can purge off this game. There is a lot of disables, uh, lots of things that are sort of gonna cause grief. The Lion's gonna have trouble ganking him. Um, it's really the, the Clinks who's going to cause damage to the Slark, but the Slark is very good against Clinks, I think. But again, another reason why Clinks um, should probably pick up their Orchid this game. Uh, it's pretty strong against uh, Slark if he doesn't get off his Dark Pact before you chuck yeah. on him. That's what's so frustrating about playing against the Slark, because you know you might, you might pick heroes that have such good disables, but Slark's just going to get away from them. It's really like a matter of, can you fight him head on? Can you actually take him down? Even you know, without trying to disable him, you might want to try and disable the other, the other people in the team because he will just purge it off. And the cooldown on Dark Pact scales really well. It's six seconds at level four. It's super quick. And we saw the Nature's Prophet ban last. That's a late Nature's Prophet ban. <laughs> Very late, actually. They, so yeah, they the... banned that. Um, Wait, we actually haven't figured out who the offlaner is because. Now that Slark's on the board, we'd imagine he's the safe lane, right? So well, it must be a mid silencer or something? Against the Invoker, I guess. They want to um, try and add some pressure to him, because Silencer does fairly well against Invoker. There's oh, the Doom. That, Slark can't, can't away from that. Nah, he's not going to be purging that off, that's for sure. I, um, I was actually hoping for an interesting pick like this. I haven't seen a Doom for a while. I'm... Um, yeah, I'm definitely excited for this now, um, because they needed something, and Doom is probably one of the better heroes to pick against a Slark, because there's no way he's going to purge it off, like, it's, it's Doom. Um, and I think that's really good, and there- oh! There's the mid! <laughs> so there- Offlane Silence? Ogre? Off lane ogre off lane? Maybe? Could be dual lanes, which... <laughs> I'm just really confused now, honestly. I, I just, I just think this ogre pick just doesn't really fit in a lot of ways with, with um, typical lineups. You know, he's definitely not typical in this sort of scenario. He doesn't fit yeah. very well. That's the thing with ogre. It's really a question of does he actually do well with farm? Because I don't know if he does. 
Uh, like we said, the Ags is definitely nice. Um, it's a lot of lockdown and it does improve his damage a lot as well. So, um, But I don't know if they'll be putting him in that farming sort of role. It, it'll be interesting to see how they run these lanes actually. Because if they put him solo off lane, uh, I'd actually be quite surprised. I don't reckon I've seen him solo off lane since the Frankfurt Majors. It was one game. I'm pretty sure it was picked once from what I saw, and it didn't go too well. It might have been like LGD or something that did it. Uh, I can't remember exactly, but Especially, he was farming the offlane. I mean, uh, pulling ahead to have quite a bit of magic burst as well, which he doesn't do fantastically against. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how that lane works out, but we're about to see what, what they've decided to do. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to this one, but here we are, guys. Uh, salt can't melt steel beams and pulling four head. Looking to uh, go at it. And, uh, guys, I'm excited for this Doom pick. I'm very excited for this Doom pick. I actually really like playing Doom. I think he's a very frustrating hero to be up against. He definitely is. But he's gone for that Iron Talon for the jungle. Um, he wants to farm. He definitely wants to farm. So the Silence are actually heading up to the offlane off himself. Could this be an aggressive... Uh try lane with it the could be, uh, no, but, it's, no it doesn't look that way mm. maybe just a dual lane like like we were saying ogre's probably going out there as well well he's got those awards ready so he's potentially going to take them to the off lane um silence are going for that that farming build he's got the null talisman he is not going to buy any awards this game that's for sure very this is not typical um and for that reason in terms of the distribution of farm um, pulling forehead, Doom being more of a roaming hero uh, recently. Puppy has been roaming a lot with the Doom um, in terms of Dota personalities. He's been doing that a lot, and the farming. So there's, it's like a, it's even like a position four Doom we've been seeing from like certain teams, um, and I guess they need that because they have a very greedy lineup on pulling forehead. Um, but saying that. The lineup of um, salt can't melt steel beams isn't su isn't quite as greedy, um, unless you, yeah. So you've got this, you know, very two very distinct supports. Disruptor already leveling up that thunderstrike. They want first blood. So, Tide Hunter should do okay in this lane, but he has to be very careful when you're up against a disruptor. Um, if you're too far out, uh, that can definitely cause your demise just because of how strong glimpse can be um, but they don't have a huge amount of damage um, early on with just the slack and the disruptor so you should be able to survive most of the early engagements yeah I think Tide was a great pick for both teams here but someone should have picked him and they did so he is going to do pretty well here there isn't yeah like this damage is going to be mitigated um, to really shut down a Tide you need to commit a lot He's very hard to stop, and he has such good survivability just from level 1 as well. Um, he hasn't skilled anything just yet, but it's either going to be, obviously, the, the Anchor Smash or the, uh, the, the um, Crack Shell. Pretty low amount of regen um, sitting on this, this Silencer as well. He's just got one self to his name, so some early aggression um, from the Clinks could very cause greedy, some trouble. Very greedy skill, uh, item build from the um, Silencer. He's, already, he's skilled up his Arcane Curse now, I like that. Um, He's just going to try and get them away from this rune. It's but probably not going to do it. I don't know if they could be able to do it. Um, definitely going to go the way of pulling forehead here. Unless he silence tries for a cheeky deny. Probably going to be a bit slow though. You cannot deny that. And then, of course, down bottom, Slark securing the rune. So just a, ru a rune uh, swap there. No big deal for either team. Um, so neither team wanting to commit to any early game fights. They just want to go to the, the lanes without any scratches. Yeah, I mean, the, the mid hero for pulling forehead, getting the rune, and the, the uh, position one Slark here, securing bottom, so um, he is going to be slightly closer to whatever he's going for. Um, obviously, we don't know just yet. He could be even going for something like a poor man's shield. Maybe not. Doesn't really look like he is. Looks like he's expecting quite an easy lane down bottom, so it's potentially something he doesn't need to go for. But this is an aggressive off lane. This is an Ogre <laughs> Magi and a Silencer. Um, Ogre's actually taking the last hit. Mm. 
So that's definitely going to deny farm priority. I actually know Silent's a great nah. one. So maybe they're He's... sharing, I don't know. <laughs> Either that or he was going for deny, I'm not too sure. Um, but Doom is very low, he's in the jungle here, just farming away, he's actually uh, gone for the Cloak Aura. Um, probably just because he devoured, devoured the creep. Uh, and the mid lane, TA, and Invoker. Who wins this matchup, Mads? Who, who, does, th who does well here? It's... I think it's favours TA, but um, obviously a good player on either hero can make it work um, for them. Obviously in both oh, is so oh, strong. Oh, hang on Mads, we have got something down bottom. This is a Tidehunter going down. <laughs> and I missed glimpse. it. <laughs> Thunder Strike, Blimps, and the Slark had his pounce. And he did Dark Pact at the end of that. But yes, we... you were saying that TA goes in the way of TA. Yeah, I was just, just going to mention about that. That kill on Tidehunter. He hasn't got a stout shield either, so um, he is going to be taking um, full damage there from the the Slark. So maybe that was a slight mistake to go for the greedy Ring of Protection there. Yeah, but it does give him obviously Ring of Protection does give him armor, much needed armor. But Clink's getting harassed here. He is taking huge amounts of damage just from Ignite, just from this Waves of Wisdom. Um, and Disruptor's gonna get a bot, get the double damage bot. This could be some very, very nice damage here for him. No. And he's yeah, actually probably... farming a stack at the moment. They're actually farming, there's a nice stack here down in the bottom lane. To hide under getting a bit out of that though. Um, now we're gonna bring out some last hits, some net worths here. What do we got? Invoker. One, two last hits ahead of TA in the mid lane. Um, he's got his Forge Spirit to help him out. That may explain a few things. His denies are two ahead as well. Slark, though, is definitely out last hitting Clinks. If we have a look at that, there is a big advantage to him. And Clinks getting pretty low here. Does have Skeleton Walk. Oh, he's actually getting Four. very low. He just One got away with that Invis. That was a risky, down, but it's a bit too late.